Hello, paper florists. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hey, this month's paper flower challenge, as you know, is the clematis. And in part one of our three-part video series, you saw Inga make this beautiful center for these clematis. And in part three, you're gonna see Jerry, he's gonna show you how to finish off this beautiful vine. And today I'm going to show you how to make these the petals for this beautiful flower. And I'm going to show you how to do this striping three different ways. So let's get started and let's make some clematis. And don't forget, by the way, if you enjoy the paper florist tutorials, don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos below so that you'll know when each one of us posts a video tutorial just for you. So let's get started and finish making the blossoms and then let Jerry finish off the vine. Hi, so I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques for doing the petals for our clematis for this month. And where our clematis is going to be white, you can make yours any color you want. And they come in so many beautiful colors. You can Google it. I know I see a lot of blues and purples and they're gorgeous. So we're gonna do ours in white. And I'm gonna try a couple of different techniques. So I'm gonna show you the different papers that I'm gonna use. I'm going to um, make one out of a white 180 crepe. I'm going to make one out of a white doublette. And I'm gonna make one out of some of the new Cartifini 90 gram, if you happen to have that. And for the stripe on our clematis, it's gonna be pink. One of the ways I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use a pink um, stripe out of the pink paper. I'm going to pan pastel one. And the third one, I'm going to use a gouache. This one is made by Arteza. Um, it's a, a metallic gouache. I have never used it before, so we're gonna do this together. And I think it'll be fun. And then I have a couple of pan pastels here. This is the um, magenta tint, which is really a nice pink. And this um, pearlescent red, it's not red, it's pink, it's beautiful. Um, I have a, a blender brush, a paintbrush, scissors, glue, and some 26 gauge white wire. I think if you have green wire and you use and you're making a white petal, I think you run into issues with the green showing through on your petal. Whereas if you use a white wire, a white paper covered wire or a cloth covered wire on with a white petal, you'll have a pretty smooth transition. If you don't have a white paper covered or cloth covered wire, I would suggest you take a fine strip of either of the lightest white crepe paper that you have and go ahead and cover your stem. So I'm gonna be back and the first one we're gonna do is the doublet. Okay, so we're back. So our first um, petal is going to be a, our first bloom is going to be a white um, doublet. And I just have a piece here that's gonna be more than enough for what we have. And I'm going to cut a swath of this that's about two inches. Now, let's make it two and a half inches across. Okay, so we're going to take our two and a half inch piece and we're going to fold it in half so that we have a nice square. Now, clematis come in lots of different sizes. They come teeny tiny all the way to super huge. So this is gonna be one on the smaller side. So I've got a two and a half by two and a half inch, two squares of it here. And I know that you know this technique um, that we're going to miter it. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two pieces and I'm going to, you can, I hope you can see this in the camera, the green lines are going up. So you want the green lines to go out on your petal. And we're gonna need six of these. So six petals. So I'll need two, two more sets of this. And I think with this technique, you don't need a template. You can cut it by hand. One of the things, I know templates are, 
are useful when you're new. Um, and as you move along, think of templates as training wheels. And I like to show you methods that you don't need a template. You can cut it. Anybody can cut this freehand. If you're taking your two by two, in, two and a half by two inch square, you could do a three by three inch square too, or bigger if you wanted to. But I think that this is going to be perfect for our needs. So you want to make sure that your 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 grain lines are going up. I'm going to take um, my 26 gauge wire, grab a pair of cutters here, and I'm just going to cut. Oh, maybe I'm going to err on the side of long and cut about them about four inches long. I always like to have longer wires. You can always cut them if you need to. Okay, so I've got my six wires here. And I've got my six sets of, miter, of miters. Let's smooth that out just a little. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this technique one time because we're going to use it for all the different papers. And so I'm just going to show it to you this one time. When we come back to show you the techniques for adding the stripes, you will have already made your petals out of whatever paper you're going to use. So I'm just going to put a thin, oops, a thin stripe of glue. And I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to, this wire is actually a little short. And I want it to be about two thirds of the way up the petal. And then just overlap your two pieces. You don't have to be super exact on this, but you want to be, you want your overlap to be as small as possible. And press it from both sides. And um, I usually use a brayer, so I will um, come back when and brayer those just to make sure that they're on there really well. You can use your fingers as well. So we're just gonna repeat this process. And again, make your overlap as small as possible. That first one I did was a little big, but it's okay. Because we're gonna cover this up with our stripe. Because the thing about a clematis is they have that stripe down the center. This paper's kind of bent up. I'm a left, lefty, so you might do this um, the opposite way that I do. I know it's kind of hard to see with all this white. Um, when, oops, I forgot my wire. See, this goes pretty quickly.
here's my brayer. Let's try that. Just take your brayer and just press it down. And last one. Escapey wire. Here we go. There. This is the same technique that we use for making leaves. Okay. So we have our six petals. So while we're letting that dry, I'm going to show you what I'm going to use on this first petal. First thing I'm going to do is clean off the glue that I have that's stuck to the mat. And I use a glass mat. Um, this one's made by Crafters Companion. It's made for card makers. So it's got card making marks on it. But um, it just cleans up so well. So I'm going to take um, my pink paper and I'm just going to cut a piece of this off, just a couple inches. Okay. And the one thing I want to do is measure how long it is from the end to here. And it's about that long. And I want to give myself a little extra play. So that's about um, one, two, three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut a bunch of these, six of them anyway, at um, three, a little over three and a half inches. Okay, and this is going to be enough. I want to give it a little bit of a stretch. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to fold it into thirds. This one just happens to be the right size, okay? I think, we'll see. Yeah, okay. And we're just going to cut a strip that's really thin at the top and it's going to be a little more um, wider at the bottom. So you want to strip just like that. This might be a little fat here and you can adjust it as you go. Get my scraps out of the way. I'm going to give this a little bit of a stretch. I'll fold it into thirds. Okay. So, I'm going to just fix this just a little, just make it a little prettier. It's a little thicker than I, wider than I would like it to be. And you just want to eyeball it and get them as close to each other as far as the shaping goes as you can. That one's pretty good, that one's pretty good. This one's a little wonky. So just clean it up a little bit. Same thing here. Okay, so we've got those. And then we've got our six petals, and uh, you should let these dry. These are not quite dry, but I'm gonna fold this in half. You see that? Just like that. And I'm gonna cut a 
the petal. This one's going to be a little wide, so let's make it a little more elongated. There you go. And I'm just going to do that to each one. And see, you don't need a template for this, do you? They don't have to be right on 100% exact, but get as close as you can as possible. If you need to, you can mark out here how far out you want to cut. This one I didn't get smooth. There we go. This is the hardest part of this. I think you've already seen. Um, Inga did an amazing job on the centers. And um, I colored mine a little differently, which I will show you when we start putting our bloom together. Last petal. And you can, this again, Just this is just your first cut here. Um, I've done this a lot, so I do it pretty quickly. But see, like here, I want to clean this up a little. Okay, now see how I have a little narrow neck there. I'm going to ma make these necks. I'm going to come in and clean each one of these up a little bit. Just make that neck a little bit narrower as we get closer to the center. So we've done our first cut. Then I just come in with the second and just clean it up just a little bit. You know, basically make the base of the petal a little neater. Okay, there we go. Okay. This is pretty this is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna take our little pieces and we're gonna basically glue these on here. And you know, by looking at it here, I'd say that might be a little thick. Wide. I shouldn't use the word thick. Wide. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make this strip a little skinnier. That's better. So I'll just do that with all of them. I'll make them a little skinnier. And so I'm going to walk you through this one all the way to the end. And then when I come back in with the other techniques, I'm just going to show you the technique. And um, you won't need to watch me put the petal, the whole bloom together each time. Okay, there we go. So. Got our six petals. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to use my thumb on here a little bit just to smooth out that paper a little bit. You can see it's going to go in there just like that. And I don't like the way that goes together. This is where you can come in and clean up your details each time. There we go. Okay, so... Take it, put 
a little glue on here. And I'm going to use my finger to spread that out nicely. And we're just going to place it right along this. I hope my head's not in the way. Center of that. You know what? I'm going to redo that. I still think it's a little wide when I'm looking at it on the petal. So we're going to cut it down a little more. <coughs> Excuse me. I have allergies. Now this should work. See, isn't that the fun of making paper flowers is, yeah, there we go, is that we kind of learn as we go. Okay, so let's try another one. And because I realized on my last one that it was a little, still a little wide, I'm going to make this narrower. Okay, take my next petal. And there we go. I see a little. And like everything in life, it's all about the details. So if you take the time to fix any imperfections in the beginning, then you won't have to worry about them later. Oops. I'll just secure that. By taking your thumb and using your thumb on on the paper like that, you're breaking down that paper and softening it up a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But you want to get it as close to how you like it as you can. Oh, I don't know if you hear my phone going off or not. I don't know why it's doing that. I thought it was on silent. But best played, let best laid plans, right? Two more. Last one. Looks like I have more than I need. This one's pretty thin already.
There we go. Okay. That one's a little off center. So I can pull that off before the glue dries. There we go. Okay, now we're going to come in and we're just going to cut off that excess paper. See, that one's off a little. Put a little bit of glue on there. See, you can fix your, if, you, if your glue hasn't dried all the way, you can fix your mistakes. I hope that you enjoy these tutorials that the admins do for you. Um, we enjoy doing it and we just want to encourage and help our community as much as we can. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do before we attach our petals is we're gonna ruffle these a little bit. And this is where you're gonna see the differences in the paper. Um, some of these are gonna ruffle better. Um, ruffling is just taking the paper between your thumb and forefinger and just st gently stretching it. Um, one of the things that I do is just take it, pull the paper apart like that. You create those little ruffles. So we'll do that. And it's as if you're tearing, but be very gentle. You don't want to tear your paper. I've done it, we've all done it, torn our paper. And uh, you know what, you just have to make another petal. These petals are pretty, this one I messed up totally. We're gonna cut one more. I mitered it upside down, can you believe it? So I'm just gonna take a two and a half inch piece of paper here. And see what, okay, so here, happy accents. You can see I mitered it wrong. The chevrons go in that way and that way. So it won't stretch. One side will ruffle, the other side won't ruffle at all. So I have my, I'm just gonna take this and fold it in half, create another, I'm gonna have to cut it down just a little bit, but. Let's see, two and a half, perfect. Okay, do it right the first time. Let's see, everybody makes mistakes. That's, you know, the beauty of what we do. There's no real mistakes. There's just happy accidents and they're, you know, learning experiences every time. So even those of us that make it look flawless, we make mistakes too. I guarantee you, uh, my trash can's full of of pieces that eh, I don't like the way that turned out and trash it. This wire isn't the right wire. That wire was too heavy. There we go. Okay. Grab my brayer. And this really isn't dry enough to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's pretend that this is dry and we'll cut this petal. Neck 
a little. And if you think your shape isn't really exact, it's okay. Okay, I do, I happen to cut one. Remember, I cut one of these too many. So that's a lucky accident too. I'm just gonna. Put some glue on there. down the middle is it fix that there we go okay better cut the tails off of our piece okay now we can ruffle this one So I'm going to clean off my space, and when I come back, we're going to assemble our first bloom. Okay, so we're back, and we are going to attach our petals to our center. So here's one of my centers. This is one I made based on Inga's tutorial, and uh, mine's a little different colors than hers, but, you know, that's what makes it fun. So I've taken my petals, and um, I'm going to have done the ruffling. This one's not very ruffled. There we go. And... Um, I'm going to take them and I'm going to bend it back just a little bit, like here, just a little, just to give you something to attach with. And the thing about, and I'm going to add a little glue here, and I've done that to the rest of my petals, although it's been a minute. So let's just... There we go. Um, the thing about a petal, a flower with six petals, is there's two layers. And we're going to take it and we're going to come right up underneath where our, oh, you know what I didn't do? I have a piece of green doublet here. You can use floral tape. I prefer to use doublet and I'm going to cut a little strip, cut a couple here. I'm going to need them all to finish this project. Okay, stretch it out. Decide which side you want out. Have that side facing down. I'm gonna use the bright green on the outside. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here. And I did change, I brought this blue mat in. Um, I hope this helps you see a little bit better. Okay, so we have our first petal here and we're just gonna put it on here right below where our The, bo the bottom of the stamen fringe, okay? Now we're gonna take our next petal and we're gonna put it on angling a third. So it'll go right about there. And then wrap that on. Okay, come around, put the third one in. Again, this doesn't need to be exact. Okay, now we're going to start putting in the second layer of petals. Now, Inga's is a little fatter. Fatter? I don't know if that's... She probably wouldn't like that word. Her petals are a little wider than mine. But, um, again, that's what makes this art, right? We all do it a little differently. And then there's our last petal. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap the rest of my stem. I'm going to take my, and because remember clematis is a vine, so when you build your center, 
we want to build it on a fine wire and we're going to connect them. So then you can just come in. I don't like this one ruffled a little more. This one too. Bring your petals in. There is our first clematis. That's our first technique. And um, I'll come in and show you. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you a couple other techniques. The only thing we're going to do differently is we're going to use a different paper and we're going to use a different way to to make that um, the stripe on, on it. But we're going to stick with the pink and the white. And then I'm when we're all done, I'm going to attach mine all together as a vine and they're going to go into an arrangement. So thanks so much for joining me. I will be back with a few more ideas for you. Okay, so welcome back. So we're gonna do a couple of different techniques to color the um, the little stripes in our clematis. So I've got a piece of doublet crepe paper here and I'm just gonna cut a couple inch piece off of it. And um, this one's just a scrap. As long as it's, you can get your three and a half inches out of it, you're good. So, um, three and a half, and boom, right at three and a half. Okay, so I need six for this first one. So I'm just gonna take this one, two, three. Okay, actually, I can do four. Let's try it this way. There we go. So, because we're gonna need a total of 12 for the two techniques I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna cut our strips. Remember how we uh, wanted to make them thinner and I'm probably gonna cut this one down even more. Here. Let's get the scraps out of the way. And then we'll just take them one by one. So, let's make that skinny. So you can cut them as thin or as thick as you like. It's up to you. I like to like cut my basic shape and then come back in and clean up. I just get better cuts that way. You like me? I throw my scraps on the floor and I sweep them up every night. Because they're going to end up on the floor anyway. I mean, if I have big pieces, I will put those in the, in the bin. I have two bins under my desk. One is for paper that can be recycled. And one is for things that have wire and things that can't be recycled. So we're just going to cut, because we're going to need six. I got four there. I'm just going to cut the basic shape. See these big, throw those in the trash can. So I'll cut two, I'll do these two for you. For this one.
I'm using Deb Wet because I think it'll hold. First one we're gonna do is the gouache, which is a water-based paint, gouache, like wash, uh, spelled G-U-A-C-H-E. It's a highly pigmented watercolor, water-based paint. And because I have this um, glass mat, I can put my paint right on my mat. So I'm just gonna put a little dab, it's like all I'm gonna need. And I have a paintbrush. And I do have a little water here, and I'm gonna get it just a little, just to dampen it. And I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this all over, and bring this in for you here. And I'm gonna paint this, ooh, this is a metallic. This paint, ooh, it's bright. This paint is from Arteza. I've been buying quite a few things from them lately. I find their prices good. And um, spread that out with a little more water on it. There we go. This is their bubblegum pink bubble bubblegum. Um, it's really bright. It's a little bright, but when it dries, it might dry a little lighter. So I'm just going to get my paper wet here. There we go. Then put a little bit of wash on there. And you can go as heavy-handed or as light as you like. There, I went a little lighter on that one. I might use a little more water on this and lighten that up a little bit. Again, what, what, wet my paper. You can see it doesn't take much paint. If you're using a pan, or like a watercolor pan. Oh, another technique for this. Oh gosh, I could come up with hundreds of ways to do this, to accomplish this, depending on your, I'm trying to pick a couple of ways that um, our paper florist community might have on hand. They might have, Pen pastels, not everybody does. Um, so the pink paper was good. A lot of people have that. Um, another thing most people might have is watercolor. So this is just your watercolor substitute. I'm just using a fancy watercolor. And you can see, I just put a little dab of that. See, that's the glory of the gouache. And you, like I said, you can use any water base. You could use an acrylic paint for this too. Oops. It's kind of soggy. I'll just set that aside. I want to let that dry. Okay, so I'll just let those, set those aside to dry. And then I'm gonna show you the next technique. So let me wipe this up. Get that off my space. Set these aside to dry. Probably gonna take about 10, 15 minutes, maybe less. And this paint will will dry a little lighter than it is. Uh, I'm gonna use a trim set down. There we go. So set that aside. Clean my space. So I have two of these. I'm gonna need four more. So I'm just gonna cut another piece of, I'm gonna cut this like this, be big enough. 
cut it at three and a half inches. And you'll have to calculate, you know, what works for you. Get four out of here. And we're gonna do the same thing. I suppose I could have done this section for you ahead of time. I figure the more you see us work, the easier it is for you. couple of things that you want to make sure you have is a good pair of scissors. We, as paper florists, highly recommend the Kai scissors. These are the four and a half that I use. I always have a pair on hand and an extra pair. They can be sharpened. I've never had to sharpen mine. And they're not expensive. Um for a good for as long as for as long as I've had these scissors I have never sharpened them I've just kind of go through a couple of pairs a year, maybe not even in a year so okay so there's four more so I'm going to do this on here too so here's our six and we're going to color these with pan pastel Like I said, I have these two pan pastels here. This is the magenta tint, and this is the pearlescent red. So I'm going to start with the magenta tint. And just, oh, how pretty is that? Actually, looks like I may have some color already on my... This is a really subtle, oops, really subtle um, pink. A warm, really warm, soft pink. And I'm going to add, I'm going to come back in with a little of this red just to brighten it up. And these blender brushes work great for this. I don't know if you can see, I'm just tapping on there. And this pearlescent red just has a nice little sparkle. Oops. This one needs a little more pink. And the thing about these blender brushes is you can work this color into the paper. I am not going to spray these because this is going to get right into that paper. I'm going to add a little more pink here to this. Okay, set those aside. Take these up. Clean my space. Okay, I can bring our mat back in, show you how this is gonna go down. So these are the 180 gram ones that I did. And I'm gonna take each one of these and I'm gonna turn them over and I'm gonna do this on my mat too, because I don't wanna get glue on 
I'm going to do some of my glass mat. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each one because I'm going to work fast enough. I'm going to put glue on all of them. And then I'm going to show you the characteristics of this paper, how different it is from the doublet. I use my finger to spread glue out. Make sure I get that all covered well. Okay, take my petals. Let's start with one. Line that up and there we go. Oops. Oh, these are a little short. I think we'll be okay though, because you're not going to see that bottom part of the petal. I don't know how we miscalculated that. If you're doing this, I would probably, if I weren't just doing this for a quickie demo, I would put new strips on there. But I'm gonna bend it there so you're not gonna see it anyway. So this, these, this one's long enough, I guess just that way I trimmed them down. Oh, maybe these are the two I did first. Remember, I did this separately. Because this one's short again, too. And my glue is oh, still tacky. Okay, I'm going to brayer these just. And my glue's lost its tack. I didn't put enough. I didn't work fast enough, so I'm gonna add just a dab of glue in here. There we go. And there we go. I'm gonna double check this one. Yep, that's fine. This these are good. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna come in here and work each petal just a little. And this is where you're going to really see the difference in the heavy crepe paper. Um, the, the ruffling, this one's going to be so much more ruffly than the doublet. And I'm going to go ahead and bend it here. Like I said, you're not going to see that. So ruffle here. Okay, I'm going to grab another one of my centers and some doublet tape. We'll, I'll show you the differences between the two. Put some glue on the base of these. Okay. 
same thing we did before. We're going to put these on in threes. So we're going to bring this in and put it right up under there. Next one, we'll go, let's, let's get the tape started first. Okay, let's tape that down, secure it. Okay, there's one. A third of the way. And then the next one, we'll go right there. Okay, one in between. And the last one. Put it right up in there. And then wrap my tape down. Now we'll shape our petals. Take the top three and shape them first. There we go. There's the first. This is the one with the pan pastel. Here's the pink one that we made first. So you can see the colors are pretty different. Um, very similar. Let's um, let's go ahead and glue the other one. Set these aside. Grab another center. And then these are the ones that I did with the new 90 gram. So we're just going to take these and turn them upside down. They're dry enough. They're not 100% dry. If you were doing this at home, I would say let it dry thoroughly. some glue and Oop. be careful I caught my I need some glue down here on the bottom caught my glue bottle on the because it is still damp so I'm gonna be really careful with these like I said if you were doing this at home you would let oops let it dry glue on my fingers. Last but not least. No. Okay. Okay. So I'll take one. Pardon my head. Same process that we did before. Be real careful. Like I said, this paper isn't dry yet, so it's really delicate. I wanted to get this done for you. And of course, the next step next video 
you're going to be able to finish your clematis. Jerry's going to finish off the bloom. Knowing Jerry, he'll do a couple of buds, which I'm just focusing on the petals here on the main, main bloom. And he'll do the greens and the vines for you. So I'm just going to clean this up a little. See, I got a little spot there I want to fix. Let me get that down there. Leave that. Cut it back a little further. See, that's the thing about cutting this heavy crepe versus, or this heavily creped versus the doublet, is um, you just have to be a little more careful about how you cut it. to um, ruffle these. This this paper has an incredible amount of stretch to it. Pardon my finger. And this has got a 500% stretch, so you're going to get a super ruffly petal with this new paper. further down even than you can with some of the other papers. Okay, let's put this one together. Bend our, bend our petals. Grab our strip. Okay, so I've got glue on our, my petals and I'm going to put some glue on and let's attach them. And the third one. Stay up close there. Four. Five. And six. and then wrap the stem. So there you have it. Same process we did on the others. So here's our doublet, here's our 190, and here's the 180. And I'll be back with a wrap up and a final handoff to Jerry. So there you have it. We made our beautiful blooms. We made petals three different ways. I'm sure that you're gonna enjoy making one of these, using one of these techniques for your paper flowers. Don't forget, once again, that if you enjoy the tutorials that your admins do for you, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
and hit the buttons below so that you'll be notified every time one of us posts a tutorial for you. And don't forget to stay tuned for part three. Jerry's gonna finish off this bloom between Inga and Jerry and I. I think we're gonna teach you a lot on how to make this beautiful bloom. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Jerry so he can finish it off. So thanks so much for joining us on The Paper Florists. Thank you.